In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the summarize DAX function to group your data into tables. We're going to go through it. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So summarize is one of the DAX functions that you'd use. If you want to group your data into tables, it's probably easier if I show it to you using a demo. So here in this report, I've added a couple of tables that will seem familiar to you. It's the same data set that I've been using in the past couple of years is the Northwind uh, data sets and it has a couple of tables here that sort of summarizes orders and sales for a fictional business that sells groceries internationally. So I have a couple of tables here. Um, so we have the categories table, which is categorizing all the products that have been sold. We have the order details, which contains information about the orders themselves. So how many were sold? What is the unit price for each of them? We have the orders table, which just gives a bit more information about the orders themselves. So uh, when the order was made, who the customer was, where the order was shipped from or shipped to. And we have the products themselves. So the name of the products and things like this. And these tables already have their relationships pre-created. So we're not going to go through them just so you know that these tables are not disjointed. They are connected via primary and foreign keys. And these relationships will pretty much drive how we summarize our data. So for example, if we want to know the total quantity of products that were sold by each category, with the relationships pre-created and predefined for us, we simply just need to drag a couple of the columns into our report view. So we just drag in the category. This will give us all the unique categories that we have in our categories table. And then from here, we simply drag the quantity column, which will automatically summarize and sum up that value of quantity for each of those categories. So you can see it's been implicitly aggregated using the sum, which is just adding them all up for each of the categories. And this is essentially what it means to summarize your data. So we group the data by the category name, which is the, the category name column here. And then we have the aggregates of the column quantity over here, which is pretty much like summing up your values for each of the category. If you want to achieve the same results, but have it as a table in your model, you simply can't do this. You need to use the summarized DAX function. So let's have a look at what it says in the documentation. So here's what the documentation says about summarize. It returns a summary table for the requested totals over a set of group. We can see the syntax of how you can write the summarize function here. And you can see here at a minimum, it asks for a table and it asks for a column you want to group your data by. You can see here we have this three dots and the box brackets, which means that you can add first as many of the grouping columns as you want. And this box brackets means that it's an optional. So you have, you can have just one, but you can have many, as many as you want. And then you have another set of box and uh, ellipses here, which is the name and expression combination. So this is what your aggregations will be. If you want to know more about the parameters, here are the definitions. So you have the table, you have the grouping, which is what you want to group your summary table by and then the name that you want to give to your expression which is you know what you will convert into a scalar value so either summing up averaging things like this and because this function returns a table you can't just use it by itself in a calculated column for example you'll need to summarize it so for now we'll use it as parts uh, to create our virtual table there are a couple of examples here of how you can use summarize. So I'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to check them out. But uh, we'll go through a couple of examples just to show you what else you can do um, and how you can work on it in your own context. So let's go back to our Power BI reports here. Um, let's go to the data view because it's easier to visualize here. And let's create a new table here. 
I'm gonna name this one uh, just test for now, and then we'll use summarize. So here it's asking us a table, which is what we want to summarize. So we want the order details here. And then we want to add a group by column. In this case, we want to use actually not the order details, but we want to use the categories, the category name as our grouping by column. Now, if you're wondering why I can use it here, even though we've defined the order details as a table, that's because we've defined the relationship between the orders and the categories table using the relationships at the beginning. So if we close that and hit enter, you'll see, so this summarized table right now just returns us a unique list of our categories grouped into sort of unique rows. So now we need to start looking at adding our aggregation. So the same way that we did in the report view here, we want to add up the quantity as a separate column by itself. So we go back to our data view here. Let's just organize this a little bit. So I'm just going to separate them into different lines. So here now we're going to create our name and expression combo. So we're going to name our column first. So we're going to name it uh, total quantity. And then we're going to add the expression that we want here. So we're going to say sum up the quantity from our order details table. If you hit enter, you'll see that now we have the same results that we have in our report view. So you have the summing up of the quantity as a separate column. You'll notice that we wrapped our quantity here with a sum. And for expressions in the summarize column, you need to use aggregation functions like sum, for example, to kind of get a singular scalar value as a return value for your column because it's only expecting one result per row. From the documentation we just looked at, it showed us that we can add more columns if we wanted to on both the grouping and the aggregation. So let's give it a try. So let's, I'm gonna add another set of name and expression here. So I'm gonna do, instead of totaling, let's, gonna, let's do an average unit price. And then we'll use average this time, and then unit price. So you can see you're not limited to summing as your aggregation function. You can use the whole suite of the aggregation functions available to you. So average, min, max, uh, median, things like this. Now, because you can use expressions in your aggregation columns, you can practically use any expressions that you want here as long as it returns a singular value. So let's say, for example, we want to get the total sales across all the categories as a separate column. And normally you would you know, create a DAX column here, but uh, we can simply just add it here in the summarize. So I'm gonna create a new column called total sales. And we're gonna use the iterator sum X, which we will use to do uh, quantity, multiplying it by unit price. So you'll see it gives us now a summary of the total sales across our different categories by doing this expression, doing quantity, multiplying it by unit price, which gives us total sales. Beyond the aggregations, you can also use multiple columns as a grouping column. So for example, here we've just added one grouping column, the category name, but you can add more to this. So for example, you want to create a grouping by category name and by let's say product name. You can do that as well. If you hit enter, you'll see that changes our table slightly. So now instead of having one beverage per line, you have now beverage and then product, which gives us separately our quantity for that product, the average unit price of that products, and then the total sales for that product. Let's remove that for now. And let's bring it back to the simple table here. And let's go back to the documentation here. So you can see in the documentation, specifically in the example, it gives us the ability to use rollup, which is essentially just adding a new row in your table that subtotals the values that you have in your groupings. So if we go back to our table here, for example, in our summarize, if we 
wrap up our category name with a rollup. Just close that. So you'll see that it returns us the exact same table that we've done with summarize, except it adds a new row, which essentially subtotals all of the different aggregation columns that we have in the summarize. And you'd normally do this if you somehow needed the subtotal value as a row in your table. Now to distinguish it from your other rows, though you have an option to use a different function called is subtotal, which they also demonstrate here in the documentation. And it simply just adds a new column that sort of defines if the row is a subtotal or not. So let me show you how to do that. So if we go back here and let's just add another column here is subtotal. And we'll simply just say is subtotal here and then give me a subtotal of the category name. So you'll see it adds a new column and it just defines which row in our table is a subtotal. And this might be as a part of a more complicated expression for your calculations, but it allows you to kind of distinguish which row is the subtotal or which one is a roll up row. And that's really it for this video. So as you saw, the summarized DAX function is mainly used for grouping your data into tables in Power BI. And it's simply one of the ways that you can group your data. There are a couple more different ways like summarize columns or using group by in Power Query. And if you want to know how those are done, I've actually covered them already in a separate video. So if you're interested in seeing how those work, and they're a lot simpler than this, go check it out if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.